Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Victober video. Today I am coming to you with a video that is all about Elizabeth Gaskell. Last year I did a couple of videos where I just chatted about my two favorite Victorian authors who are uh, Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens and I just did a little video talking about the books that I had read by them, uh, what else I wanted to read by them, and kind of where I think you should start with their work. This year I wanted to do a couple more videos in that series but there are only a few authors that I have read more than one book by uh, that could really warrant having this video and Elizabeth Gaskell is one of them. I will say I think Elizabeth Gaskell is kind of middle of the road for me. Uh, I have a couple of hers that I really truly love and I think there are a couple left uh, that definitely have the potential to be five-star reads for me in new favorite Victorian novels. When I first started my journey with Victorian literature, Elizabeth Gaskell was one of the first authors that I tried. And I think that was one of the ideal ways to get into Victorian literature because her language I don't feel is that dense and I think she also just has a really wonderful comforting writing style that really eases you into the time period. And so I kind of thought when I started my journey with Victorian literature that I would plow through her books and really go ahead and complete reading her very very quickly and that just has not happened. I first started reading her in 2018 and I haven't even read a book a year by her which I think is kind of interesting but I really have a fondness for her writing and I really enjoy her writing style. I think that is going to be the thing that makes or breaks her with most readers. I feel like if you don't automatically take to her voice I don't know that you're really going to like the majority of what she writes, but if you do take to her voice, you're in for a real treat. So let's get into kind of my semi-ranking. We're going to go from the bottom to the top here. I have read or attempted to read four things by her. One of them is a DNF, so I guess I should technically rank that at the bottom, but I feel like on an objective level, this is a book that I would enjoy more than another of hers that I've read. Uh, so. Let's start with the book that I just feel is going to remain at the bottom for me, and that's Cranford. I listened to Cranford on audiobook a couple of months ago, and I just didn't feel as though it was anything special, especially compared to other works of hers. This one really fell by the wayside to me, and it just wasn't nearly as enjoyable as some of her other works. And I know I'm the odd man out here. A lot of people have told me that they just truly loved Cranford. A lot of people have told me that I need to reread it. So I recognize that this one has a lot of staunch supporters. It just wasn't for me, and I don't think it ever will be. It is not a book that I have any intention of rereading. And if this had been my first foray into Elizabeth Gaskell, I think, I just think that I probably wouldn't have carried on with her. I really just felt like this was very middle of the road. And knowing what she is capable of, this one just didn't stand up against some of the others of hers that I have read. So unfortunately, I feel like it's got to be at the bottom of my list. The book that I DNF'd is Ruth. And I feel confident that when I come back to Ruth, I'm going to rate it more highly than Cranford. I think this is a book that I just need to be in the right headspace to read. Ruth is about a fallen woman, and it's apparently just a very dark and sad story and I think I need to be in the right headspace to pick it back up. The reason I DNF'd it had nothing to do with the writing and very little to do with the plot. I just felt like it was very heavy and I was not really ready to read it at that time. From what I have heard from other Gaskell fans, Ruth is one that sometimes ranks at the bottom for people but it also sometimes ranks at the top and I think it just must depend on your feelings towards this one. This must be a book of hers that you either love or hate. I get the sense that when I go back to this that I'm probably really going to enjoy it. One thing that I really love about Elizabeth Gaskell is that her books offer a lot of social commentary and that's definitely what I think Ruth is playing with and so I'm very excited about this one. I'm just going to wait until I'm really ready to read something this heavy before I pick it back up. In second place is a book that I think for most people will rate near the top and this will continue to rate near the top for me and this is North and South. North and South was not only my first Elizabeth Gaskell novel, it was also my first foray into Victorian literature. 
And as I stated earlier, I just think that was the right decision to make. I think her writing is very easy to read and it really helped prepare me for other Victorian novels that were a little bit more difficult. North and South is also kind of a social criticism, but it's also a love story and it has my favorite love story in Victorian literature in it. So this one will rate near the top, I think for most people, and it is just a genuine pleasure to read. This one has everything. If you really like romance, I think you will enjoy this, but if if you want there to be a little bit more substance to the story than just straight up romance, I think this is one that you will really enjoy because for me, that's kind of my struggle with Jane Austen. I'm constantly wanting a little bit more from her, a little bit more going on in the background. And a lot of people compare North and South to Pride and Prejudice, like it's Pride and Prejudice, but in the Industrial Revolution. And that's definitely what this is, but I like it a whole lot more than I've ever liked Pride and Prejudice. This is one I've also reread a couple of times and I've reread it on audio. And I really think the audiobook experience of it is just absolutely wonderful. I love the miniseries adaptation of this. North and South just has a really special place in my heart. It is just in general one of my favorite Victorian novels. At number one, my favorite Elizabeth Gaskell novel so far, because I still have a couple to go, uh, is Mary Barton. I love Mary Barton with my whole heart. Mary Barton takes what is going on in North and South and really goes very far with it. This is a very socially political novel, and it is so in a way that North and South is not. North and South still feels like at its heart it is a romance story. But Mary Barton really feels like at its heart it is trying to make a lot of social commentary. It's trying to have a conversation with you as the reader, and it is trying to comment on what is going on at the time that this book is set. That means that the book is many layered, and so there are so many different ways you can go with this when you are reading it uh, and when you were analyzing it. The shocking thing to me is that Mary Barton was her first full-length novel. I just cannot believe that because she is a master class in this and I really think her writing and her prose are just wonderful in this. I love the characters in Mary Barton as well, particularly the side characters. I will say that is something about Elizabeth Gaskell that I really like and that I appreciate is that she does give due diligence and a lot of time to her side characters. She really develops them. She allows them to have their own plot. It's perfect in here. This also has a love story, but literally, the love story on the side in Mary Barton, it's top tier. And sometimes I think it may even beat out the main love story of North and South. Uh, so this one is just my favorite of hers. I really don't think it's going to be unseated. I truly don't. This is another of my favorite Victorian novels of all time, and I think it's going to remain my favorite of hers. Looking forward with Elizabeth Gaskell, there are a lot of different books by her that I want to try. I think the novel of hers that I'm really going to love, and I've been told this by many different people, is Sylvia's Lovers, which I think is kind of her foray into sensation fiction. And I do genuinely think I'm probably going to like that because I just love a sensation novel. I really truly do. And I think she is going to really do it to perfection. Uh, and so this is one that I'm kind of saving for the last. I don't know why. I just feel like I want to save Sylvia's lovers for a treat somewhere down the road. Uh, but I think this is one that I'm probably really going to love. Another of hers that I want to get to, but I have always been very tentative about, uh, is her biography of Charlotte Bronte. And this has sat on my shelves for years. And the reason that I have never picked it up is that I have heard from a lot of people, you should combine this with a modern biography of Charlotte Bronte, or you should read a modern biography of the Brontes before you go into this. Uh, because though this was kind of the original, this was the blueprint for biographies of Charlotte Bronte, uh, it has a lot of misinformation in it that we now know is not true and there were a lot of factors that Elizabeth Gaskell had to take into account when she was writing this that meant that maybe she sanitized aspects of Charlotte Bronte's life uh, in a way that we would not today 
I have heard mixed things about this one as well. Like some people just don't even think it's an enjoyable read, regardless of the fact that parts of it are not true or we know are inaccurate nowadays. A lot of people just say this in general is not a good read. But I kind of think it's got to be good because Elizabeth Gaskell wrote it and I really enjoy her writing style. So I think if that's present, I'm at least going to have a good time with this. But I do feel as though I should go into this a little bit more prepared and with more of a background knowledge of Charlotte Bronte's life from a more modern biography before I try to get into Elizabeth Gaskell's interpretation of what happened. This is an interesting case study and it is one that I think when the time comes I'll just dedicate an entire video to reading because I think it's going to be an interesting ride. Wives and Daughters is another one that lives on my TBR and I have also thought for a long time because it was her last book that it should also be my last of hers that I read. And I'm not sure that that's the best idea because a lot of people rate Wives and Daughters quite highly but I feel like I want to know that at least there is a gem there at the very end of my reading journey with her and I feel like Wives and Daughters is going to rate pretty highly for me. I just feel strongly about it. Though after the experience that I had with Cranford, I'm not nearly as confident about Wives and Daughters as I used to be. And so now there is a little bit of some trepidation. There's a little bit of some fear involved in it because I wonder if it's going to disappoint me in a similar way. Elizabeth Gaskell also has several short stories and novellas that I would love to try. Uh, and I know last year the group read for Victober was her gothic tales. I would love to read that and I just feel like I'm probably going to get on with her shorter fiction. In terms of where I think you should start, I have a real fondness for North and South. A lot of my positive feelings towards this has to do with the fact that I know it is not only my first foray into her writing, but it was just in general my first foray into Victorian literature. And so this kind of served as a gateway drug for me and it really opened the doors to Victorian literature as a whole. But that's kind of why I think it is one of the best recommendations that I can give you. I think this is not only the place to start with her, but if you are unfamiliar with this time period in general, I think it's a great place to start with the Victorian period. This is just a very cozy atmospheric read because that's kind of her writing to me. Her writing is very atmospheric and very cozy and it feels like something that you should be reading while you're drinking your mug of tea. And North and South really has it all in that regard, but it's also a very political and social novel. And so there's a lot going on in terms of subtext here as well. So I just think this is a really wonderful and rewarding reading experience. And so I definitely think if you're looking for a place to start with Elizabeth Gaskell, though North and South is her most popular work and this seems like a basic answer to give, I still think it is possibly the best place to start. This was a much shorter video than the others that I did last year, but I feel like I still have a long way to go on my journey with Elizabeth Gaskell and I'm really excited about that. I would love to know down below how you rank her novels, where you would suggest starting, what your favorite of her novels is, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Happy Victober. Goodbye.